Hi, my name is Noel Johnson. I spent most of my adult life and my childhood on Monona Drive and Atwood Avenue. The Johnson clan all stuck in one area. My grandfather was the only one that was alive when I was alive, my dad's dad. He lived with us on Willard Avenue when I was born, okay? My dad lived on Willard Avenue. His brother, uh, Ed, lived on Miller Avenue at 409 Miller. And the sister, Lena, lived on 317 Elmside. And Oscar lived at 18 North Fair Oaks Avenue. And my other, the other one was Charlie, and he lived in Monona on Starry Avenue. And that's how the family sort of stuck together. But, you know, everybody lived around where they worked, you know. My dad my dad was a mailman. Ed was a, worked for the state up at the Capitol. And they all had bus service. They could go out and jump on a bus and get wherever they had to go. And here sits what was the coal food store. But prior to that, it was Monona Cabins and Trailer Park that my dad operated for years. I wasn't born here, but when I was two or three years old, I, they moved into the Monona Cabins and Trailer Park. When they bought it from old, I think they bought it from a guy named Doc Tierney, they called him. On Winnequa Road was a, a storage building for the Monona Cabins and Trailer Court. And my dad gave it to my cousin who was deaf. He and his buddies dug the basement to that house with a shovel. And then they built the garage there, but that's where they brought the kids up. And it, in 49, we moved down to Buckeye Road. The house right over here was Burlings was built. That was the newest house. That was built when I was still a kid. And then there was Fergie's, lived right here, and Dick Fergie was in class with me. And next door to that was Kearns, and there was two daughters and the husband and wife. He was a good bowler, that's all I know about him, but the daughter, Kathy, still owns that house. And the next one up there that you see with the wooden railing around it, is the house that I was in, that I was, we lived in. I built it with an addition on the back of it. I'm sure my mother had me watch like a hawk. I built the porch back there that's still there. And we built the porch over the top of a bomb shelter that was built back in the 40s. We lived there till I was after I got out of high school. And my dad died in 1953. In 1955 or 56, my mother remarried Louis Meltretter, who was an old family friend whose wife had died, also a male man, which my dad was. And then this house that's in the green, and I don't want to cut anybody down. The kids all called her Old Lady Splees. Her name was Splees. She, she was probably 90 when I lived there as a kid. But she had the only house back on the street that had an outdoor toilet. And the newer part, this addition has been put on. And underneath there was the only pump she had. It was a hand pump out in the front. That next house was Neiman Torgerson. And Clara was his wife's name. And he and his brother ran a, a automotive shop up on East Main Street. This house here is, was Stan Salverson built it. And he was married to Stella. And they raised their kids there. That house there was Amitz. I don't know what happened to Paul, but Salverson's daughter now owns it. Oh, I'll give you a cute story about this house. Senator Proxmire and his wife got divorced. His wife's name was Elsie. Elsie got married to Miles McMillan from the Capitol Times, and they lived here. And there's a big area in the back. That lot is probably an acre and a half lot. She threw parties in that place <laughs> that you didn't go to the liquor store and buy the liquor. You brought the liquor companies to you. Everybody joked about it because nobody, none of us got invited to it. And it was really interesting to see what she did around there. And I heard that she got cancer and they had a suicide pact between them. Senator Proxmark had visitation days. And they had a carnival down on Cottage Grove Road where the that bowling alley is or what it was now. And I just had a driver's license, just gotten I was just turned sixteen. And Cece and Teddy were proximary's kids. 
And they went with me down there because I said, did you ask your mother? She said, yeah. It was Daddy's visiting day. And I came back home, and here's Senator Proxmire sitting on my back steps waiting for me. <laughs> That's Stories crazy. of my life. And I'm going to turn here on Jerome Street. And there's a, that church there was a, a real dump. They, they bought it out and from Truex Field for a dollar, moved it in, and they've since remodeled and tore it down so much that they redid it all. Right here is where I went to school, grade school, and we had two schools. We had the old school and the new school, and there was a big tunnel between them. And we went between the two buildings on tunnels. I remember more junk than I should ever be able to allow to know. Ninety percent of the kids who go to the Monona Grove High School right now do not know that it was named after Blooming Grove. If you ask them, they'll tell us after Cottage Grove. I was in the first class that went the full four years through there. Hey, young fella, Navy has news for you. If training or travel or pay, you want to get into the Navy Blue. Before graduating from Monona Grove in 1959, uh, I joined the Navy because we still had the draft then. And by volunteering, we could pick the branch of service that we wanted. I also chose the Kitty Cruise, as we called it. This meant that if we joined before we were 18, we could get out on our 21st birthday. October 1962, my enlistment was extended because of the Cuban Missile Crisis. But in November, the Navy withdrew the extension and I got out on my scheduled time, which was my birthday, December 18th, 1962. When I was in service, my mom and Louie sold the house on Buckeye Road. And at that point, they moved into 2325 Center Avenue. And that's where my mother was when she died in 62. So once I got out of the Navy, I moved back to Madison. And I um, took up housing with Howard and I own coal uh, because my parents had both died. And my first job in Madison after I got here was driving cab was <laughs> my instructor one of them was Paul Soglin I had for a couple of days at the same time I delivered uh, some paint from Watts paint company I think I delivered part-time for him for a year maybe and after that I went to Madison bus company which I stayed to for 52 years and I uh, I enjoyed it and I learned a lot but at the same time I knew a lot about construction so I built houses. I built uh, four houses in Cottage Grove that were real close together. I built 438, 440, and 442. They were in a row on Lorry Street. Anyhow, it's an Ollie Skeldall subdivision. Four streets out there were Connie, Bonnie, Lori, and Cheryl that were Ollie's four daughters. And there was another little street that ran off of it that was only a block long and all that had on it was a sewer pump station named Donna Street, that was his wife. <laughs> I'd like you to remember Atwood Avenue and Monona Drive from 70 years ago. I'm sitting right now on the corner of Monona Drive and Dean Avenue. I'm sitting in the parking lot of the old Dean House that was later on the headquarters for the golf course, and now it's back to the museum of this area. Across the street from me right here used to be a vacant lot and that's where the Monona State Bank at that time was. When I was in high school, Monona Bank down here opened a, a checking account for all the kids that were seniors and they wanted them to use it. I stuck in mine for well, at least a lot of service. I stuck with it four or five years before I went back to my mother's bank which was Security State. And uh, next to that is Slendy Realty over there. I believe that was Monona Bootery. And then the gray part was that you got State Farm on the front was the Monona Grove Pharmacy. When they went out of business, it was bought out by Phil Croak and Martin Croak. They were two attorneys that were retired FBI agents. I used them. They were in the basement of the original bank that they built here. And they bought that building, and I remodeled it for them many years ago. And then next to that was uh, what was at one time, I think, Jacobson's Meat Market on that corner right there. And then... Behind that was the one-stall Monona fire station. They had one fire truck that they used. That's all they had. Across the street, that would be on the west side of the Monona Drive, was the Blooming Grove Town Hall. 
and next to that, the Arnsmeyer's grocery store was in there, and uh, they're the ones that had lutefisk all the time. And when you're Norwegian, you're supposed to like lutefisk, because I don't. And then, then there was a gas station in there, it had a open grease pit on the side that you drove the cars over instead of being hoisted up. And then we got into the 19th hole, which is a tavern, it's called a, I think it was called a Sportsman's Bar originally. And there, there was a, a neon place that made neon signs, and they all, in the front of that building had a, they called a neon cafe. It worked out real good because the high school was half a block away. Right now I'm pulling out of the parking lot of the Dean House, and across the street's now a quick trip, but I think that was a gas station owned by a guy named Dean at a record service, at a shop up behind here someplace. And then there was Harold Hippie's Sinclair Station that he and his wife ran for years. They had a house out on Cottage Grove Road, right where the interstate goes through. Security State Bank bought their house for a drive up. Clinky's was a big place. They did a lot of stuff. This is all Clinky, still Clinky property. Then you come into the area where the high school is. This was originally the Blooming Grove Fire Department's lot that they owned for pet. They had festivals and stuff on here. Right across from Monona Grove High School was, well, it started out as Mason's Barber Shop, and then there was Piers Root Beer Stand that catered to the kids from across the street. Monona Drive was U.S. Highway 51. The speed limit signs on it that I remember were 65 days, 55 nights, and the middle of the sign was trucks 45 miles an hour. 65 miles an hour on Monona Drive is what the kids do now and get in trouble for. This used to be a real nice brick house they tore down and made the parking lot out. And that uh, four unit apartment right there next to it was the Monona Post Office for a while. Somebody named Eng English used to live there. And that, whatever that thing is in the, for stargazing, has been there forever. When I was a kid, that was there. It didn't work, but it was there. This was a house here, it was Loftus's house. And this house right here was Charlie Miner and his son built this one and my dad bought Charlie Miner's original house on 4108 Buckeye. This house back here is was Grindy's antique shop and then it was a nursing home for a while. Right over here is Nobertine Novitiate and that's a was a great place. That's one of the few places the parents wanted their kids to go because we played with the young priests that were here. And they were not allowed to take us out in their boat, but they had a big fancy boathouse out in the back. And, and they, they did all kinds of athletic stuff. I was in, it, in the building a few times with them, but, and they'd feed us cake. I remember that. And, and then you're back on, you're still on Monona Drive here. And you got to realize there was no such thing as stopping ghoul lights out here. So now we're coming down here. Um, you go down, the Nobertine ended right down here. At, I call it a sewage ditch because. They got a big storm sewers that could run and all the way up the Buckeye Road. We used to crawl through them when we were kids. And they did a lot of weird things around here. They, um, that driveway right there with a for sale sign in it was Art Voigt's house from Voigt Ready Mix. And he sold it and they tore the house down and there it's been sitting like that for probably 15 years. There was two buildings in here. It was Hogan's Pharmacy and the Kroger Grocery Store. And that was all that was here. And it was a big item to have a grocery store that close to your home and everything. But they were out doing the small groceries. They were going out of business right and left down the road. This monster thing here was a, they, they bought a couple houses. One of them belonged to Martin's. Um, Laverne Martin was the father and Jim was his son. I think the son is still around. He was a radio ham, a big, big ham radio operator. W9MNZ. Now, I don't know why I can remember them numbers, but that was his call numbers, and that was his license plate number. A guy named Simonson. They started Simonson's hot water heaters. They built them over on Commercial Avenue. And then there's Pierenboom's lived in the next house. I went to school with Dave Pierenboom. He was one of my classmates. And then Lake Edge Lutheran Church was put in. But you get down in here, now, some of these houses haven't changed at all. Let's see. That house right there is Matt Olson's, that's 4015. And I think the next one was a guy named Stan Klein. But 
They all they were croquet players, all those important people. Uh, right here, that building with all the whatever on it is was originally the uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken had the top and all that crap on it. And then you get over here to this building, it has been rebuilt obviously. But it was a building that the fire department used for their hangout, basically. And then there was Jack's garage. And he had a wing on the garage for a fire truck. He was a Blooming Grove fireman. And when something happened, he had to get in the fire truck and fly down the street. Across the street over here was the original Judge Bensley's house, right over there. And where you see that building there was a Catholic church's house that they owned. And a priest lived in there, and he had so many books. They apparently wrecked all the floors, and they ended up tearing the house down because they couldn't fix it. They sold it room by room at auction. Where Walgreens is now, there was originally a gas station that I never saw, and then there was a man named Art Hambrick that had it for an electric shop. He promised me a job when I got out of service, and uh, after Hambrick was there, Phil Gorman and Gladys Gorman ran a Dairy Queen there, and of course, starting right here was all CNP, all the way to the liquor store. This liquor store right here, now it's called Harley's. That was Jack Thurber's liquor store. You know, like everybody, they lived in a neighborhood, and he lived in the 4100 block of the neighbor of Hegg Avenue, which is a block behind Buckeye. And so did Art Hambrick from the electric shop. Michael's was Vogus's golf station. That's the original brick to it over there, to the front of it. Just went into the city of Madison on that side of the street. On this side of the street is Monona yet. Until you get to the East Side Businessmen's up here. And that is where Monona ends and Madison begins on that side of the street. And the corner house right here, this brick one, that was Ole Olson's from Ole's Clothes Shop, another croquet player. Then you got the Eastside Businessmen's here, next block up here. There's a building right here, this flat roofed one. That was a small root beer stand that was there for a while, and then they tore it down and built that building. But as you cross this street, you get into what was, I'm going to tell you, a DX or a Sunoco gas station. Don Roland ran it. And he ran Don's towing service in Madison. And then next to that was a miniature golf thing. And then the, another root beer stand. Guy Ward got it and made a big root beer stand out of it called the Hungry, Hungry, Hungry. And his, then his son John got it and made it Big John's. And over here where you see these trees, uh, 30 feet from the sidewalk was the lake. The lake started there about 30 feet beyond the city sidewalk, and they dredged all that in. And when they dredged that in, they dredged these ball diamonds that are across the street, which was the city dump. It, they dumped everything in that dump. It was called a burn dump. They burned everything, but it was also a raw sewage dump. My dad had a car, an old uh, gasoline type truck, and he hauled raw sewage up and dumped it in the creek up here because. That's where it went. This is Starkweather Creek. Always, I always, we always thought it was a sewage creek from Troy Field. Didn't have telephones like you got now. Our phone number was Gifford 1500. You picked the phone up and told the operator you wanted Gifford 1500, and she connected you up with your parents or where it was on that line. You know, people realize don't realize we didn't have radios. We didn't have there was no television. We didn't get television until 19, I'm going to tell you, 53 or 54. And some of us had got it, had big antennas on the roof so you could pick up Chicago. They used to have a little bridge in there that they put up every winter for the toboggan slide that was up on the hill on, on between Lakeland and Oak Ridge. And the kids would toboggan slide down it. And if you made it across the bridge, you had a real good toboggan. We had a big scaffolding and they had a regular ski dump and you come all the way down. Of course, and across the street here is the Garver Feed and Seed, but it was also the uh, sugar beet factory for sugar beets. That's how it started. 
and Madison Silo was in there for a while. This is Center Avenue. That two doors up was where George Bishop lived, from Bishop's Market. He was in the, in the 2200 block of Avenue. Then you got Lowell School. That was built long before my time. I can't tell you anything about that. But on the right-hand side up here was Rennebaum Drugstore. And across the street was Wine Shell's department store that Ken Snell and Vern Bierencott bought. They moved off of Williamson Street and down here. That building there was the first and last chance tavern. The sign said first chance coming in and last chance going out. And then Gerhardt's Pharmacy was right next to that. Right here was Bud's House of Sandwich. Mm -hmm. That was Bud Chamberlain that owned that and he owned one on the west side. And he was a Dane County coroner. He got murdered in the city county building along with one of his assistants, I think. Then the Glass Nickel got it after Bud got murdered. Right there is Mark Glass Nickel. That was um, Stan Good's Barbershop forever. Attached to it on this end was Mama Amato's Cafe. That had squiggly neon lights all up and down it. And it was a good place to go. They, she allowed the kids to raise hell in there a little bit. And there was a gas station right where we were going through. It was a Texaco station that I ran for a while. And over here, that building there was Doc Fosmark's building. Right where the, they got their tents and stuff over here was a standard gas station. By the way, they called that what having a ga gasoline alley. And then that was Lesky's first steakhouse from Bob Lesky and Gracie Lesky. And this side of the street was Madison Kipp. And it's always been there, but when I was a kid, there was two eight-foot cyclone fences around it with three layers of barbed wire on top and armed guards on the gates. On this corner right here was every kid in Eastside's favorite place. There was an a and root beer stand that was right out to the corners, and they had girls on roller skates that waited on cars. And over here was Barney's Barber Shop. We don't know if he used more liquor in the hair or in, the, in himself. And then you got Thorson Star Fixers. They were there forever. Millvanders was in there for a while. And this building here was originally a Wisconsin bedding. I owned that one time for a few years. I did a lot of remodeling in there, and there's an apartment upstairs. My One of my first tenants that I had in there was a man everybody knows, Joe Parisi. He was a teenager then, I think. And then there was a, body, a car shop next door to it, and I can't tell you the name of that anymore. And this was Kubitschek's bakery where this vacant lot is. And Kubitschek uh, baked every, every day of the week, but on Sundays if people went to church, which I'm not Catholic, so I didn't go here, but the whole east side smelled of baked bread, and everybody loved it. And that building right there was Art's Grocery Store. And this was, I think this was Roy's Grocery Store. And then you get over here, that's St. Barnyards, or St. Bernard's as we call it, or Barnyards. Kids called it all kinds of things. Then they built St. Bernard's School here, which is everybody's hangout, including the Lutherans like me. <laughs> they, had a, they had a sister in there named Ann Rages. And she had a ruler she smacked you on the fingers with. She didn't care what religion you are. If you got out of line, you got it. I was innocent. I would never have got it. And this is a building Doc Fosmark <laughs> built. That was his last office he was in, I think. And then the next, the next building is um, Appliance Service mm -hmm. and Repair, I think they called themselves. He moved up the next block on Atwood down there. Now bear in mind I'm just telling you stuff that I know or remember and I don't guarantee to be accurate in what I'm telling you. And right here was an original hotel and it was the uh -huh. Eastside Businessmen's. And that's the place my dad had his fatal heart attack inside of there. And you remember that. Of course, Plymouth Church has been here forever. That was Lost Gordon Brothers Lumber Company. Herman Lost Gordon ran the lumber yard, and Oscar Lost Gordon ran the, the insurance business out of them. They ran both of them out of there. They were all good people. Herman was a croquet player, so I know him. That building right there is um, the old Hudson Park Pharmacy. They used to have four or five phone booths lined up in there before we had anything else. And next in the same building was Millie's 
Millie's or Millard's Hat Shop. And then you got Levenix Grocery at the next two buildings that are Martin Glass. And here you got the old uh, for Security State Bank. And then you had Falcon Underwood Hardware. And then you had Ole's Clothes Shop. And you had Irv Goff's Music in this building over here. And Dave Goff ran that gas station. That was Irv Goff's son. It was a 66 station, I think. That building right there was Mel Hardware. And this was a steam and die cleaners here. And this was Anderson Brothers Automotive in here. I got I got their time clock yet. Big slam pendulum job. And this place right here is where Badeau Plumbing started. And this, I think Jim Taylor opened this little building here as a as a, a diamond store. And then on this corner was Julius Hovland had a barber shop where that building is right there. And then next to that was Bishop's Market. If you look in the back, you see a big square chimney in a far back corner. See that little tin roof, that square roof? That's the top of the smokehouse. And it's all full of racks so they could smoke the sausage and bacon, anything he wanted to smoke. He did it all with hickory. He sm smoked everything with hickory, brought it in by the truckload. That was a heating shop right there. And then there was something else in here, and I can't tell you. And then the, the Caribus Bar, which is now the Harmony. And that was the old original bowling alley in that wood. It had manual pin setters things in it because we used to go in there and play. Get thrown through the back window and they tore it down, built a building. They tore that building down and built this one in my lifetime. I've seen them do that. And then the next block on the left down here was a, a big building that was, it had uh, Dorme Hamilton, I think was the name. It had a beauty shop in there. My mother used to go there. And then there was a, I think a McNee saw sharpening service in the basement and then there was a Madison most beautiful fire station that they tore down the number five station was a beautiful building and we used to raise each other up in the back up into the host tower and we weren't supposed to but and everybody hung around there the kids hung around there and the people from the streets hung around there they played cards at a big round table in it and right next door to that was a Skelly gas station and over here, where you see this uh, Wilson's Bar, I think, was the Spratz's grocery store. And the barber shop has always been there. has been different names. And then the original Gerhardt's Pharmacy was right on this corner, right here. And on that corner right there where that building sits was McCaukey's Mobile Station. And then we had a cookie shop next door to it. And then we had Norman Wings, and this had a five and dime in there. Casey O'Brien was in there for a while, I think. Down there is a high low supermarket. And they've been there for now it's called Jennifer Street. And I think I got the name, I think a guy named Bob Gerard ran it. And Bob Gerard got shot one day through the door of his house across the street. Some guy tried to rob him and he ran across the street, shut the door and the guy shot through the door. Didn't kill him but wounded him. When you get into this block, that was uh, Bird Pearson. Had the patents on the rolling machines for advertising stuff. That was there and had apartments above it. And then the CC Riders used it for a hangout for a while because it was a uh, bar, bar in front and, and they were behind it. Uh, and then you get into Havy Brothers Gas Station. Dick and Dave Havy owned that. They were East Siders all their lives. And that now it's Monty, Monty's Blue Paint Diner. And over here we had the typewriter shop. And Jason Johnson's first jewelry store was right here at 2094. And of course you got the Eastwood Theater. And that's been there forever, but they changed the name to make it look different. And if I'm right, I think it's got one of the deepest wells in Madison. Because they pumped the water through the walls to cool it off. And then that building right there was the next... But no plumbing shop, it was a national tea store, and they advertised they were the first store in the world that had automatic doors. They had rubber matches stepped on that opened the doors for you when you got there. Then uh, Newsletter Press moved into that building after they moved out of the one that I owned down there where the Wisconsin Bedding Company was. Jason Johnson started, started out right here in a little bitty building where the bright yellow awning is. That was where he started. And that was his jewelry store in the back. He had a place for his brother, 
worked on people's feet. They had stuff built in the floors to wash feet and do stuff like that. And, and then you get down in here, right here was a DX gas station. George Van Buren owned that gas station. It ran it, I don't know if he owned it. And when they started giving him a hard time, he moved out and he went over and moved into a shell station on the corner of Johnson and East Wash, which is now a pizza joint or something over there. <clears throat> but down in through here was, um, well, it was Gracie's, Gracie's Greasy Spoon, as we called it as kids. She married Bob Lesky, that's, and then they built out on Monona Drive. Yeah, there was the arcade bowling alley was in there, and that's gone, obviously. I bowled in there a couple times. And this was Sid Satcher's gas station and car wash right here. He washed cars, and his son is still around selling stuff to the cars. And this was a furniture store. I think they had a middle that was out. You could walk around it like the one that was up on State Street. And then you get over in here. Right there is, that was Ragged Shoe Store, that one right there. And they, they provided cardboard boxes to George Bish to wrap, wrap a sausage in. And the little tin shack, as we know, Trochty Building, was Vic and Vi's Cafe. They ran a restaurant out of there. And then over here was the Shank Eagle, as we all know. They sold uniforms and everything to everybody, and it was a hardware store. They had a first floor and downstairs. And upstairs were all professionals. My first dentist was Vinnie Stidgen. He was up there. This building was built by the uh, local, the um, Amalgamated Transit Union was part of it. And that building right there was Nibble Nook. And Taco Palace was a Grande Tavern. And the uh, next one was Strand's Bakery. He made lasa for half the world, I think. He was a good Norwegian if you didn't talk nice to him. You didn't talk to him at all. And then there was the grocery store on the corner. Yeah, Bernie Foss and his wife, I think. And then around the corner that you see is, is a barber shop that was uh, Ivor Kalbakens. He had a brother that was down here in one of these buildings on Atwood that was a carpenter. And he had another brother that worked for Seymour Heating, which is back on Russell Street. And then Flagstaff Flowers. And now over here on this side, that was Bornstein's, and then there was a heating shop. Anchor Inn was an 18-year-old bar. When you graduated from 18, you went to the 21-year-old bar. And this was Larkin's Automotive, a big auto supply place, which had apartments above it. And then that says Frank. They call him Frank. We always called him Footsess. The barrel factory is down behind here. here. Security State Bank was right here. That's where the new one went, got, went, out, went up from Ohio and Atwood. But where the drive-up lanes here was Gunderson Funeral Home. And then that little square building there is the air thing to clean up the air from 3F Laundry and the carbon tetrachloride, I think, is what they used. And then you get in here, they tore down the Madison East Clinic, was a relatively new, that was torn down for this place. Trinity Lutheran Church was a beautiful church. That's the church my wife belonged to when I got married to her. But we got married in Bethel instead. One of my favorite hangouts was Havy Brothers Gas Station on Atwood. And my wife at that time was selling tickets for Josie Hess, who ran the Eastwood Theater. And I was always teasing her. She parked her car next to the National Tea Store next uh, by Havy's. And I kept making things like I put grease on her dad's car. I had a greasy hand and I went behind her dad's car and smeared supposedly grease on it, and I went over and talked to her. I said, yeah, I sure smeared your dad's car. Up. Oh, you didn't. I said, you want to bet? So I bet her that I um, did it, and I bet so I intentionally lost. I took her to Nam Yee's Cafe for steak dinner, and that's one of my first dates with her. I had a GI Bill, which I got a, bought my house on 1118 Birchhaven Circle, and I bought it from Pat Lucy who had taken the house in on a trade, I think. One day I was driving the bus routes and I was coming down the Buckeye Road, coming down the hill, and when I got near the house that I grew up in as a child, Ray Filer was the name of a real estate woman who was putting a for sale sign in front of the house. And I stopped the bus and I talked to her. I said, meet me at the bus company. I'm interested in that house. 
at like 6.30 or so that night. When I got in with the bus and I was off work, she was there. And I talked to her a little bit, and then I said I want to make an offer. So the offer was accepted, and that's the house that my wife and I moved in after I sold the house on Birchhaven Circle. When I bought this house, there was a small garage that we, I wanted to get rid of, one car garage. And I, um, Bill Vogus from Vogus Autos, I, he said he'd take the garage and he came and hauled it away one day and I, I built the garage out of boards that I got from tearing down a, what we called the tar paper shacks in Truex Field that were housing for the air people. They were 100 feet long and 24 feet wide. And they were three and a half inch tongue and groove boards. They were the roof was built out of, which I took a nail puller and pulled all the nails out and brought them home. And I had to bring them home every night because people would steal them if you left them loose out there. So then they, I piled them all up out there, and, and I went and got a building permit to build the garage. And I went up and talked to the guy at the, the city hall, and he told me I had to be three feet from the next door neighbor's garage. And he says, call me when you get it laid out where it's going to be, and I'll come and look at it. Well, I got it on strings on, like we did. We put a string around so we knew where we were going to dig. And I called him. He never showed up. I dug those ditch, the, the, those footings in there 42 inches deep with a post hole digger, 32 feet back and 24 feet across. Then I called him. He came out and looked. He says, you can't put that garage there. I said, why? He says, you got to be, I think it was five or six feet from the next door neighbor's garage. Says, you never told me that, and you never came out and, and looked at it when I asked you to come out and look at it. So I poured the concrete the next day. I said, come and get me. I'm going to build a garage there. And that's basically what I did. I poured the footings in, and I built the garage without a floor for a while. And, but I didn't have any money. I didn't. I, I drove a bus. I think I was getting $2.30 an hour. And, you know, this is my job I spent my life doing. I tried to get these flooring guys, and a guy that owned the Motel Royal, he did cement work, and I said to him, I said, well, how much you want? And I think he said he wanted like $50, and then to rent him a machine. Well, the flooring machine was like $35 a day or something, and I gave him the money for the machine and the thing, and he, he kept the money, never got the machine, and did a beautiful job of finishing my floor. And I didn't really have any charge accounts around, so I went into Marling Lumber, which was the only one around at that time. And I went in there and I talked to Mr. Marling, who was probably the great grandfather who the people had sold it out. And I told him, I said, I, I need it. I think the garage was like 100 and the door was like 120 bucks or something at that time. That was a lot of money. And he says, well, I said, I'd like to buy a door, but I can't pay for it. He says, well, what can you do? And we made an arrangement. I think I paid $30 a month. And he paid it. I still have that same charge account. That's how my garage got built. Six or eight years go by and I have a daughter that was born in 66. And my wife is now expecting another. That was Andrew, Andrew Olaf. And then the good old city of Madison comes along and they annexed a big share of the town of Blooming Grove. At that time, 2417 Buckeye left the Monona Grove School District, which I was so insistent on it, and became a part of the Madison School District. When the city got the thing, I started looking, and I bought a, a house from Daryl Wild that was on South Beltline Court. I bought, as a big spender I was, I bought it for a dollar, and I moved it to the lot that I had bought in Cottage Grove Township from Warren Bass and put a big addition onto it. My son Alan graduated from the UW as an engineer. He retired, I think, in February from the state. My daughter graduated from the University of Wisconsin, and she's a veterinarian. She owns her own vet clinic in Waupon. We built a cottage up near Crivets. It's got a Crivets address, but it's like 25 miles out of Crivets. And my son Andrew went to the UW for two years, and he runs his own construction business today. I'm, I'm very proud of my kids and how they turned out and were never in any kind of trouble. And we're now living in a year of 2022, which I never thought I'd make. Over the time, I bought the Huffman House soft plant factory that they had, and I made it into a 17-unit apartment with the kids, and it's a good 
project, I'm low income. I'm lower than most, I'm not a low income housing area, but I've got reasonable rents, my tenants seem to stay with me. The, the money that we make and the way we live now, we have a wonderful, wonderful life, but too bad we couldn't have done it 30 years ago when we had more ability to do it than we have now. And basically that's the story of my life as I lived it and still am. And I hope to be around a couple more years to rest.